All right, you guys, so today we are doing the comparison that we couldn't finish last time, which is going to be Fuji Superior versus Ultramax 400. We have Trev again from the dark room, and uh, we're gonna be shooting through two very interesting cameras. What do we have, Trev? So these are both Canon Elan 7s. Uh, this is an Elan 7, this is the EOS 30, which is the Japanese version. Mm -hmm. And if you follow the dark room, and see our comparisons. Almost all of the comparisons are done with these cameras because I have two of them and the lenses change easy. And I also have two 40 millimeter pancake lenses that are really good. So it makes it easy to do comparisons. So we're gonna do this comparison with this and then change it up. And then change it up. But uh, we're comparing both of these 400 ISO film stocks because they are more on kind of like the cheaper end. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the news of Fuji discontinuing 400H and Trev and I just both wanted to explore different options and show you guys what uh, some of these cheaper options could do for you uh, when selecting 400 ISO films. Yeah, and you like this, you shot this more than Pro 400H, right? I love right? it, I love it. It's cool that we're doing this comparison because this is my favorite cheap, is it? affordable, film is Ultramax 400. I've shot with it a lot. And then yeah. yours is that, right? Yep. That's yeah, so it'll one. be a perfect little comparison. We're yeah. going to load these up, which it's very, <laughs> very uh, easy. How fast? See, yeah, I know. There's always the people doing the challenges to see how fast they could do it. If I can load this up properly. There we go. Awesome. But yeah, All right. we're going to be shooting this awesome scene right here. So yeah, let's get shooting. Cool. Let's do it. Get spoken to people only see you when you up, then they notice you. Trying to be a legend, cray lines is quotable. Only the real shot last, and I only know a few people when they feelings always acting emotional. Ain't about a check, then it ain't negotiable. Gotta show respect to the people that's posting you. Soon to be on posters, posted up like the older dudes. Now we aging like fine wine. How we supposed to do? Peep the shade on the timelines, that's time post the cool. Just black and white, like photos from a disposable. Certain situations you ain't end up uncontrollable. All up in their head, I be so confused. I just brush it off, peep the shoulder moves. We all got the same 24, so it's no excuse. Switch it up, we could rap or produce. The things you can't have is forbidden fruit. It seems like people love telling lies on me. They know that I'm the one, they got their eyes on me. They know I'm here to stay and I won't leave. We do this for the fans, for your eyes only. Just watch closely, but they all gon' see. They don't f with us, but they still gon' pray. Don't talk to me, man, you gotta show me. If it ain't ISO, then it ain't. It's such isolation from all negativity. They tried to bend over, but can't get rid of me. All right, so basically, Trev and I are just comparing settings. So we're, we're shooting pretty much everything consistently. So every shot is taken at the same shutter speed, same aperture. And then the only kind of differentiating factor is going to be framing. So uh, we're really trying to get you know the most consistent results possible. We do this for the fans, for your eyes only. Just watch closely, but they all gon' see. They don't f with us, but they still gon' pray. Don't talk to me, man, you gotta show me. If it ain't ISO, then it ain't in these, yeah. One, two. Yeah, do whatever you want.
hang out underneath the bridge over here. That's cool. Okay, you're good. All right, you guys, there you have it. Fuji Superior versus Ultra Max 400. Now, before we jump into talking about these two inexpensive film stocks, I want you guys to really quick comment down below which one you guys preferred and also why based off of the results that you've seen in this video. Now, I can't personally deem a winner in this comparison just because I do have a little bit of a confirmation bias when it comes to Fuji Superior, but I will talk about the differences between the two and share my thoughts around that. First and foremost, the color. The colors are noticeably different. In some cases, Kodak Ultramax seem to provide more saturation as well as a more true-to-life look. And if you guys remember our comparison last week between Kodak Gold and Fuji C200, this is exactly what I said in that video. This is something I'm finding more and more consistently within Kodak film stocks, that they're giving more of a natural tone and saturation to their image. Now in terms of the Fuji's colors, the main takeaway for me simply was, yep, you guessed it, the color casts. I think this is just something with Fuji and you know the way they kind of crafted their film to look. Uh, mostly all of the images in this have it, but it's most noticeable in the photographs that have slightly underexposed shadows. Like for example here with an image of Trev and kind of the bottom torso half of his body slightly underexposed because it is backlit. Where on the other hand, if you properly expose the shadows, just like in the next image of Trev here, um, it's still backlit, but as you can see, there's no green tint whatsoever. Next, let's talk about the color temperature. We shot all of these images within minutes of each other, but when you look at our results, the Kodak film seems to be slightly warmer. Even images made in the direct sunlight, the Fuji film gave off a bit of a cooler color temperature. And I think this is something that I would keep in mind, especially if you are picky with how the film stock could manipulate and make your images look. Landscape shooters, I'm talking to you. It's not drastic, but in my eyes, it's definitely noticeable. And I think this is something that everyone should take into consideration before selecting a film stock. And the last point I want to bring up is that both film stocks have nice grain structures. Being that these are some of the more inexpensive films and that they are 400 eyes, so I have to say I'm fairly impressed. You get fine grain from both film stocks and when you crop in, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. It's not clean, but it's also not muddy like digital noise. It's fine enough to the point where once you're zoomed out, you won't really see it. But the good thing is it's not going to overpower your images, just like some of the other film stocks in this price range would. As long as you know how to expose it and uh, shoot it properly, you are going to be able to get good results. It's good enough for portraits, I believe, and it's great for everyday photography or you know street photography for that matter. Uh, but most importantly, you guys, these are some of the lower costing film stocks that you can just stock up on and really have a bunch of it ready to go. And overall, you guys, I am very impressed with how both of these films perform and I would highly recommend them to you guys. So. I'm going to turn the mic over to you and I want to ask you which one you preferred, which one did you like better and why was it the Fuji or was it the Kodak Ultramax? Let me know in the comment section down below you guys. I am very curious to hear what you guys have to say. Um, but for now, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode here on the channel. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Minolta Gaming.